right so we'll continue our discussion of this uh, hertz dipole uh, the only sort of uh, thing to remember about this hertz dipole was that it was a very very small current element and because it was very small you can assume current is approximately constant right so what are the steps that we did given the uh, given the current we could calculate the a vector using this relation over here convolution of a known current with green's function i got a from a i got h and h i calculated a little bit cleverly uh, making use of both cartesian and polar coordinates right when you you're seeing something like r cross z so i've mixed up these coordinate systems and i've got a very nice expression over here and we notice that far away the fields go as 1 by r and then we said that the electric field is simple to obtain once i get the magnetic field just by taking the curl right so uh, if i now go to take the curl of this expression you can sort of see what coordinate system will i use spherical right because it has r theta phi everything is there inside it so spherical is the best thing do you think it will be a very beautiful expression right it's going to have everything in it right so i am not going to write down that curl operator and derive it but this is the whole expression over here so this is the magnetic field which we already saw the first expression and the second is obtained uh, is sort of when i take the curl of this i get two components so there is a this was in the phi hat direction then i have a theta hat and a r hat okay so just to remind you this is my r hat direction right which way is uh, this is my theta and this is my phi so theta hat is pointing downwards over here and phi hat is which way into the board right so this is my phi hat that is what this coordinate system looks like r hat dot z hat was written sorry cross r hat cross z hat was written as sin theta phi hat minus right the direction between the i mean the yeah perpendicular direction is phi and the uh, angle between them is theta so sin theta right the unit vector so mod r mod z is 1 fine so this is the expression you get you notice that the expression for the electric field is fairly um sort of scary looking but this is the exact expression okay there are there are uh, apart from the fact that the uh, length of the dipole is small there is there is no other approximation in it, right? so looking at this the first thing to do is let's take a simple simplified version of this when we say that we are going to look at what are called far fields okay in this problem very naively i am going to say far field is when kr is much much greater than 1 okay there are more refined definitions of this we'll come to them later under this under this approximation what happens to the magnetic field i have two terms right in this bracket i'll just keep the first term because kr is much much greater than 1 right so in that case the magnetic field magnitude becomes i mean 4 pi this is jk right e to the minus jk r by r sin theta phi hat what happens to the electric field from how many terms are there five terms right so i get to keep i should keep the 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 most leading term will be just one of them which is the one term right so this will become i delta z by 4 pi j omega mu e to the minus j k r pi r sin theta theta hat okay so that's why we say that in the far field the fields are going 1 by r right in amplitude at least as a function of r it's going as 1 by r okay so we have already made one comment about how this is different from your coulomb's law right okay anything else uh, that you can notice from here 
This has, there is a lot of interesting physics happening over here. So what is it saying? When I go stand far away from the source, what do the fields look like? So which way will the pointing vector be? So pointing vector S is uh, defined as half of E cross H star, H conjugate, okay, in phasor. So which way is my pointing vector? R cap, right? So my pointing vector is along R hat and my electric field is along theta hat, my magnetic field is along phi hat. What kind of a configuration is this? What does it remind you of? It reminds you of? TEM, yeah, it is a transverse electromagnetic wave because the electric field and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other and they are perpendicular to the direction of power transfer. Isn't that also the case in a plane wave? Yes, right. So this is your this is your TEM wave. No component of electric or magnetic field in the direction of propagation. So this is the simplest kind of wave that we have studied, right? In fact, it looks identical to the 1D plane waves you have studied. Only difference is that there is a 1 by R in the denominator, and so we call this a 3D plane wave. <coughs> right. Um, so what do you expect will happen to this uh, pointing vector? We already noted that it is going to be in a direction in the r hat direction, I mean in the r hat direction. What will be the magnitude? So there is going to be a half, this whole thing is going to be there i delta z by 4 pi, okay. j into minus j is going to give me plus 1, right. So I am going to have a k omega mu. So k omega mu, what else? Pardon me? H conjugate, that is why j becomes a minus j. Whole square, correct. And sin square theta divided by r square in what direction? r hat direction, right. I think I have got all these terms. Now, so I have got a power that is going as 1 by r squared, okay. So you should keep this in mind. This I have derived for a Hertz dipole, but this is true for any antenna structure in general, far away from the antenna. Even if you take the base station, I mean the, the mobile base station and you go far away from it, you will find the fields coming from it are of this form, okay. So if I integrate, if I want to find out how much is the total power leaving this, right. So what would I do? I would integrate, supposing I wanted the total power. I would integrate this pointing vector over what? A sphere of radius some r, right. So if I did for example ds over here, so you can do this calculation, right. This is not a very difficult calculation. Find a surface element on a, on this, on a sphere and integrate. This is going to be a, um, what is that, what is your ds over here? I mean, okay, a little bit more generally, r dr, r sin theta, d theta, d phi, right. So when you integrate this for constant, I mean, over, you will get 4 pi r square, which is the surface area, right. Sorry, sorry, this, there is no dr, so it is going to be r squared sin theta d theta d phi. Okay. So when I integrate this over the surface, what will happen to the r square term? Cancels off. So the answer, I mean we can do this integration but it is not very interesting, right. The answer is independent of r. So what does that tell you? No matter where, what, I mean this is also makes physical sense. No matter where I integrate from, the power leaving the sphere should not change, right. So that is what I get, this is just confirming our intuition As, because a sphere encompasses the entire 4 pi steroidin. So the power if I calculate because it encloses the dipole, whether I integrate here or here, the power that is leaving the surface is going to be the same. Our density on the sphere will be different, that is captured by S and you can see as you get closer 
at smaller r power density increases because it's 1 by r square right the other thing to note over here is this s expression over here it's purely real even though there was a good chance that something could have hap something could have become imaginary over here because there are all these j's and so on in in the field expression this is purely real right so this is uh, it's it's what are, what circuit element has purely real power dissipated in it resistor right so this is like the uh, if you wanted to make a circuit equivalent of it it's like power that is going in through a resistor it's once it goes it goes there's no way to recover it okay so this is also called uh, so these are called radiation fields and this is called radiated power Okay, no, I think the, the very simple sort of uh, confusion over here. This is the power pointing vector. This is the pointing. This is the density, right? So this is total power. Okay, I'm calling it total power. Power integrated over a sphere. If I go very very far away, the in, the power is still there. It's going as one by r square, right? Even if it becomes very very small, I'm also integrating over a very large area. If you want to think of it that way, right? So it's going to be there. Pardon me? Yeah. Yeah. So if I if this is my antenna over here, there is some power over here. If I go further over here, right? So the power is this. I mean, let's say a pointing vector. The pointing vector is going as one by r square, right? So it's going to drop. So it's very it's low over here. It's even low over here. The power is dropping. That's okay. But now if I integrate over this whole thing over here, I get the same number. That's what you expect, right? You go far away from the source, the field intensity drops so this is your uh, near field consideration now not uh, surprisingly the, the other thing that we should look at is uh, so this is far field the other thing we should look at is what happens in the near field right so in the near field what we can say is that uh, kr is much much less than 1 so i am looking at regions very close to the antenna right? so what happens to the to these expressions so h for example which term will i keep the second term right so 1 by kr now is much larger than than 1 right so i will get i delta z by 4 pi the j and the j cancels off so i get a k by r sorry there's no k it will just become the j and the k cancels off so i get a e to the minus j k r by r square sin theta phi hat so magnetic field anyway is in the same direction. Electric field, let's see what happens. Electric field, which term should I keep? Only the 1 by jkr square term, right? So I'm going to get i delta z by 4 pi, okay, j omega mu. Then I have uh, 1 by jkr squared. <coughs> sin theta theta hat okay sin theta theta hat and then I have a e to the minus j k r by r theta okay. and one more term is there this is new so I have a j omega mu then I have a 1 by j k r whole squared I have a cos theta along r hat direction and e to the minus j k r by r. Okay. So in contrast to the far field case, the magnetic fields are going as 1 by r squared. The electric fields are going as 1 by r cube. Right. 1 by r cube reminds us of what from electrostatics? the electric field due to a dipole right so this is acting like it seems like a dipole right so now if i calculate the um, the pointing vector in the near field okay same thing i'll do half of e cross h conjugate okay um, what do you expect a lot of terms right yeah but i mean what are the essential features over here i should get a 1 by r to the Uh, 
5 1 by r 5 um, what directions will I expect so there is a theta cross phi theta cross phi is going to give me a r cap right so I am going to have uh, sin square theta r hat and then I have uh, r cross phi which is going to give me something along theta sin 2 theta was cos theta into sin theta along theta hat and a bunch of constants okay which are not so important well what is important about these constants uh, let me just write it over here is that this has a j into something okay you can see that because e cross h conjugate e both the terms of e they have a j h has no j right so one j term is going to remain over there right so what are the key features is 1 by r5 then it is purely imaginary right so this is different from your uh, uh, previous case so these are called your reactive fields okay now if i ask you if i integrate over some sphere over here what should you get will it be r dependent or not so the it should be 0 why should it be 0 no it won't be 0 so one answer is that it will be that the integral will be r dependent it should not be r dependent what's the catch no i am not integrating over the source I, the source is there and some small distance away from it i am integrating no so actually the thing is that when we wrote down these electric and magnetic fields we made the approximation kr much much less than 1 now if i wa want to find out the total power leaving the sphere i should include all the terms right if i do that i'll find out that the power is independent of r and that makes physical sense the amount of power leaving it right should will not will not change but here i am taking only out of these five terms i am only keeping two terms so there'll be some sort of mismatch over here that's okay but we are not i mean the main point is we are not going to integrate this term over the whole sphere okay this is just telling us what is the dominant part of the pointing vector what is the main contribution to pointing vector uh, in the near field so the, this this fact that it is uh, purely imaginary and reactive reminds us of which circuit element inductor or capacitor right so what happens in the near field of any antenna is that the uh, energy keeps shuffling between the electric field to magnetic field like in a lc circuit energy goes from an inductor to a capacitor and back and forth same thing happens over here okay so this i mean back and forth keeps happening and there are uh, you've heard of these wireless power transfer applications right those work best when you do it in the near field because you are able to access this energy by the time you come to the far field it's become purely real so it's only a resistive drop but here this energy is can be exploited so if for example these uh, you know toothbrush chargers and all you, you dock it over there so it's, uh, stuff is happening in the near field you are able to transfer more power uh, there is one more negative signs may be there I mean this this is bunch of constants over here theta cap it's r cross phi right so r cross that's minus theta right so there is a minus theta where do you see a j square there's no j square oh yeah well the, the expression is correct because uh, in the other case what term do you get you have a phi cross no again theta cross phi what is theta cross phi positive r but there is also a minus term there no yeah there is a full so all of those constants are inside this bracket we do not care about it 
relative to these two there is a minus sign. Okay, so reactive fields and energy is transferred between the E and H fields. Yeah. The, the total power is going to be conserved. Yeah, the pointing, the actual pointing vector will be conserved regardless of what R you choose to integrate. Okay. So, in a course on antenna theory, we would spend a lot more time deriving this and understanding all the features. We want to sort of get to uh, the, com the CEM, computational electromagnetics part of it. So, this is just by means of giving you some introduction to it.